blistering. Oh, really, really. Oh, this is very simple, but actually, if you don't have the pictures, it's difficult to explain. Hammer time. <laughs> there are going to be drivers, by the way, who I'm not going to name, but they won't be able to know all of this. There's no way. I think it's hard for, for new fans to understand F1 lingo. Yeah, it's also hard for us sometimes to understand each other. Because we are using very technical words, but I think once you understand them, then it's pretty easy. We have our own language, which is very close, so... But uh, in the end, it, it all makes sense. It's quite, uh, it's quite an easy uh, dialect, I would say. Uh, turn 23 is a lot of understeer, like it doesn't turn at all. Understeer is when you hit the wall with the front, and oversteer is when you hit the wall with the rear. Understeer means that the car hasn't had the, the grip at the front axle, so the car uh, has a tendency to go straight into the corners and doesn't really rotate enough to make the corner. Oversteer uh, is exactly the opposite. The back end of the car is sliding a bit too much, so you have to kind of correct it with the, with the car. The car has very little grip in the rear axle, so the car tends to over-rotate in the corners and you have to control it. So understeer is when the tree comes from the front, through the front window, and oversteer is when the tree comes through the front window. Both result are the same. So hammer time. Hammer time. <laughs> hammer time now. Hammer time is, say my pit stop is that 20 or that 25. In that moment, usually they say time to push. And I'm like, sometimes you're just, you're pushing anyway. Bono would come out with these long sentences. Hi Lewis, just to let you know that it's time to start pushing. And it's like a really long bit of, <laughs> I said, Bono, just tell me it's hammer time. So it's hammer time, we're stopping in the pits. So it means push like a mofo and get going. Degradation on hard is lower than expected. Degradation is normally when you talk about like tires that are like digging, uh, it means like the tires are basically dropping off. Um, and of course, normally that is lap to lap. Uh, my left front is skipping up a little bit. If the next lap you're producing 30.2, 30.4, 30.6 because the tires are going away, that means that the tires are degraded, and that's degradation. Okay, thank you, starting to kick in. You're starting to overheat them, you're starting to use them more than you should, and then the tires starting to lose the performance. If you have too much degradation, you need to do more pit stops. Some races will have zero degradation, and we would need to do zero, like Melbourne. Tire graining is where the tire just eventually uh, gets too hot and then it starts to fall apart and it starts to grain. You, you get like grooves in the tires, you know, it can happen w because of too low temperature or too high temperature in the tires. The difference between the inside of the tire is very hot because of the brakes and everything, and the outside is very cold on the surface, and that makes chemical reaction, which is called graining. If I'm really honest, I, we, we've got specialists that take care of all this stuff. When tires slide, it's rubber, you, just, you see the bit of wave on the skin of the tire, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's still trying to fully understand it, and I definitely know there's even tire people like Pirelli are still always trying to understand what's the cause of it. Blistering. Ooh, really, really. It's like, a, what do you call these things, like a coleslaw on, a, on your lip? You know, when it comes out, it just... <laughs> there are going to be drivers, by the way, who I'm not going to name, but they won't be able to know all of this. There's no way. Blistering is when the tyres get too hot because the track's too hot, the temperature outside's too hot, and you've driven it too hard, the tyres just can't take it. Most of the heat will be on a particular point of contact, and it's from that area that's sliding time and time again and being over a certain temperature and eventually if you're over the temperature a blister appears on the on the surface of the tire and it does like the skin little bubbles that's something you don't really want to have that that normally means you have to hit the box very quickly so blistering on the tires basically means you are definitely already over pushed them and they are already wet off and there's Lance Stroll getting a toe behind his teammate Fernando Alonso. They timed that very nicely at Aston Martin. The toe is slipstream. So if you follow another car, obviously that car punches 
a hole in the air. You know, track has a long straight. You try to follow them up on the on the straight line. So you're in that slipstream. There's less air resistance. You get the toe or the slipstream, and you go faster down the straight and effectively get a faster lap time. I don't really know what park permit is. It, it's a it's a rule where you come into the box generally after qualifying or after the race, and that means. No members of the team are allowed to touch the car. The stewards, the FIA, the people that are policing the sport, it gives them enough time to check that your car is legal without anyone, the mechanics or anyone, interfering with the car. And it's almost like a hands-off, no-go zone. The officials are waiting to come and check the technical side of the car to make sure that you've not been illegal, whether the car is too light or the floor perhaps is moving too much and out of the limits or you don't have enough fuel left in the car. So we have all of these regulations and the car has to be sort of locked in park firmly so that when the, the officials can come and nobody has tampered with it in the meantime. Looks like Perez has gone round, Verstappen's gone in. Undercut is if you are driving behind somebody and you stop first and they stay out and then you put fresh tires on and because your tires are fresh on your outlap after the pit stop you go faster than the guy who is still on track who was in ahead of you with the old tires so then if you manage to pass him that way while he's stopping that's an undercut so the dutchman will lead again there we go picture in picture verstappen's gonna blast past and back into the lead so an overcut is effectively when your rival has pitted before you he's put on his new tires and they're not working that well, he's not that quick. You've stayed on track and you've effectively overtaken him um, because you've just been quicker on him on the track. And when you've pitted, you've come out in front, so you've overcut him. Perez now, by putting the foot down in the way he did, he has got himself up into fourth place. Dirty air is when um, the car in front, because of the wings we have on the cars, is lifting the air up uh, in the air, so the car behind gets dirty air, and um, it's not good. Because you basically lose grip and downforce, because the air is like turbulent. And you need the clean air, basically, to have the maximum performance on the car. So if you run very close behind another car, you get the dirty air. The hot air, the air turbulent, and that's what dirty air is. Clean air is when you are in front, you are first, and you've got no cars in front. It means you have no one disturbing you in front, so you have the cleanest air to drive as quick as you could. Oh, that is very simple, but actually if you don't have the pictures, it's difficult to explain. Uh, it's basically the red and white... <laughs> Apex is just the corner, the inside of the corner, that you have to hit and you have to, let's say, shortcut the circuit as much as you can. So if you take a corner, in mid-corner, you need to get to the apex, which is basically the inside part of the track. That is a very bad explanation. But that's kind of... An apex, um, <clears throat> that's a point in the middle of the corner, more or less, um, which you try to hit all the time for basically the perfect corner radius. So the racing line is the, the ideal line, the best uh, line, so we call it. So, if, you know, usually if you approach a corner, it's a, it's a right-hand turn. You know, you obviously want to open up the corner, the angle. So you start from the very left, you kiss the apex, and then you let the car drift wide again. That's what we call the racing line. Um, and it's also the one which has the most grip, basically, because of the racing line, it's more dirty, because you don't clean it when you pass through there. The line that every driver tries to has it, you know, and it's the quickest way to go around that circle. The bottom of the car hits the tarmac. Four for sake of bottom into the last corner. Formula One cars are running very, very close to the ground. So when there is bottom, means that you are just uh, hitting the ground. So when you've got so much downforce, you're down the straight, it's a bit bumpy, and the car is scraping along the ground, we call that bottom in. And actually, our bottoms are kind of on the bottom and we feel it as well, so uh, all relatable. So in every single circuit, we have a white line on the inside and on the outside of the whole circuit. It goes around the whole circuit. And if you exceed that white line, 
with all four tyres that's exceeding the track limits. And in a qualifying lap, if you exceed that at any point, that is your lap just de totally deleted. So during a qualifying session, we might only set one or two laps. And if one of those laps are totally deleted, you've lost either 100% of your laps or 50% of your laps, and it can be quite detrimental. Drifting is um, obviously there for a long time. Normally not a good thing in Formula One to do, but uh, it's basically when you're just sliding the car quite a bit in a corner. Quite fun in a road car, you know, people always want to like, everyone looks out the front window, but drifting is when you can look out of, you know, you drive, but you look out the side, not the front. <laughs> it's not a very commonly used driving style in F1, sideways through a corner, while in an F1 you will always see us go in rails like a train. Drifting is the one that's my favorite. Basically just having four wheel slide with 45 or 50 degrees angle into the, the direction you want to turn.